Welcome to episode 40. <laughs> the, the King Elon version. We should, be, <laughs> we should be further down the road than we are, but we have been away for several we're, weeks. We're getting it's down the road. It's been dark days. A lot of illness out there in the world. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we will uh, waste no time getting right into the episode in that case. This bottle, spin that around for me. Jay Riddle. Sounds Jay like, Riddle. Sounds like a rapper. How's now, he doing? I, I, think, uh, I think this is from Michigan. I could be wrong. Josh, why don't you do I'm working quick, on it, buddy. Quick little do short. Do we know somebody yep, named Jay shallow, shallow deep dive. It sounds familiar, but that I don't think like we a, do. Like a, actually, uh, shout out to this out when we did uh, the uh, bourbon month. Hey. Oh. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. 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 All right. So this was shouted out during bourbon month. All right. Um, let's go ahead. It's got a... Uh, work on the top there. Yeah. Mm. See how we do. All right. This is two, like two James... Let's it's go. two James. There's the, a, there it is. That's fine. The, right? The distillery? The perforated. Uh, um, I can't. Their websites. Yeah, Detroit. Gra- Detroit and Grand Rapids. Ooh. Hey, mm. Grand Rapids. I like Detroit. Let's let's go. Go. My, my, Shout my, out. My aunt lived there for let's a while. Go. Kind of kind of reminds me of Baltimore. I feel like it's kind of like a sister city. A colder city? Kind of like a Baltimore, Philly... Probably equal murders yeah, per capita. Chicago. We could probably look yep. that up. I think the stats are online. <laughs> yeah. Let's find out. All right. God bless. It smells right. great. <clears throat> Let's take a quick little. It smells awesome. Oh, it does smell good. It does smell good. It's got a nice wintry flavor, wintry smell. All right. <clears throat> so just uh, real quick, let me see if I got anything on the bottle here. All right. Uh, J. Riddle, peated bourbon. The spirit of Detroit is what it says on the back of the bottle. Conceived in a city known for its gritty manufacturing, mm-hmm. J. Riddle pairs the sweet, robust flavor of corn bourbon with the elegant smokiness of single malt whiskey to produce an, ooh, this is an interesting word, ambrosial. Mm. Ambrosial? Ambrosial, A M B R O S I A L, puzzle for your taste buds. Make sure you get your hands on this fast because the <laughs> juice this good is likely to disappear. Dot, 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 dig. Uh, question mark. Two James Spirits works closely with local farmers to produce the highest quality spirits using only the finest gain, uh, grains, rather. And uh, we welcome you to share and enjoy the spirit of. Detroit. All right. And we got uh, both these boys right here on the back of the bottle. Nice little medallion. I'll pass that over to you. We can get this going around the room. I've already got a little bit. Uh, ambrosial. Off the top. Ambrosial. 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 I was somewhat right. Uh, yeah. Succulently okay. sweet or fragrant, balmy, divine, or from Greek mythology, pertaining to or worthy of the gods. Oh, there we go. God bless. All right. <laughs> Hashtag happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday. You got your party hat on? I do. I'm, it's not going to last long. It's very uncomfortable. It given, looks really tight. Given the headphones. Like under, under your chin. Given the headphones oh, yeah. situation. Uh, it's not It's not super comfortable. All right. So the I think, Josh, you're going to pull up the notes there in a second. Yeah, I think it. the first probably big thing we have on there is the Avatar yes. sequel. Obviously, is dropping. Uh, already dropped, rather. The 16th. It's out. The yeah. 16th. Yep. Now, yeah, yeah. nobody here has seen it, I assume. I no, feel like somebody would mention it. it Nobody's committed no. to three hours and ten minutes yep. uh, just yet. But I saw, I've talked to two people who have seen have it. Have gone and seen it. Yeah. Really? Mm. All right. My so, buddy. to preface real quick before you give us Go. that little hot take, uh, it was expected to do some bigger numbers than it ultimately wound up pulling mm-hmm. in. Josh has the numbers there uh, to tell us more specifically, but essentially it came in under expectations a little bit. Duh. I think it made like 450 worldwide. Yeah, uh, 441 global, yeah. 134 domestic. Yeah. Yeah. And they expected uh, a touch more than that. What, so, did they need to break even? Well, I think uh, they said $2 billion. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiots. <laughs> is what they need to really be in a good place given the amount of time and energy that's yeah. been spent. Now, the one thing, not to go too far off track, I was thinking about this earlier, but I'm wondering how much of that accounts for the other films that are in the pipeline. Because you're not, like, if you're building the set once, does that does that set to stay. count for, the like, Avatar 2 in that budget? I mean, even if you're going to roll it over and use it for set 3, 4, and 5. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like three, it four, would. Five. Yeah, I, I feel like it would. I would look at it as each project gets its own budget. Sure. Well, but it, yes, you can cut costs by I using say, your old stuff. Exactly, which makes yeah. me think that the if they're going to reuse the set in three, yeah. that it would be counted against two's budget, not there against you go, three's. Right. Yeah, you yeah. know. So, because I felt like the two billion was a high price tag, 
But I think given the amount of money they have invested in it as a whole, I think they're looking at the project as like, like a whole. They've thing. built a lot of stuff. They've done a lot of pre-production and a lot of getting stuff set up for the future films. So they're probably thinking this is the highest bar we have to hit. From here, it probably comes down a little bit. Like the movies, I would think would get kind of sub uh, sequentially cheaper. Rather, yeah. Now, according to the Hollywood Reporter slash Deadline Hollywood, the budget for two here is three fifty. Between three fifty and four sixty. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, mm-hmm. there's more that goes into that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The promotion, promotion, and the marketing promotional and whatever thing is what pushed it over. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're gonna they're gonna at, at minimum break even, more than likely after the holiday. Yeah, and as of go. as of yesterday, uh, they were at five uh, five fifty six. There you go. So <clears throat> look up the two billion dollar price tag thing. Yep. Google that for me. Real yep. quick. But, um, Just Google Avatar two two billion dollars. Thank you. I know how to use Google. Are we sure? Just checking. <laughs> All right. The original film was released <laughs> gross a staggering. Oh, uh, no, never mind. Sorry. 2.92 billion was the original globally, but yeah, sorry. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Where Josh is from is called Google. Uh, <laughs> Google. Yeah. Google. Let's type in some words. Let's type in some oh, words. Oh, I'm reading. I uh, I found one. Okay. By the metric, the way of water needs to clear 2 billion to justify its price tag and please Disney, which holds the rights to Avatar after <laughs> The studio spent a jaw dropping 350 million to produce and even more to market the grand return of Pandora making it one of the costliest 10 poles ever. So I, again, I don't know where the two billion is coming from. The, it doesn't. Yeah, it's tough to say. I'm going to guess the last, like all of the work that's been done over the last like 10 years on it. Possibly. Has that could to be. be. Right. Has to be. Know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it seems like, anyway, all the, neither here nor the, there. Speaking of that though, also, um, was it Sigourney Weaver that said, the other day that she thought the movie had been released years ago no. and just didn't do well because she didn't hear anything about that it. Was, uh, that Who was, was that? was somebody else that was it's in the sequel. They filmed her parts f- over <laughs> four years ago. Okay. Right. She, Edie was, yeah. she was recently was interviewed Falca. about it yep. and she was like, I thought this movie yep. already came out and yep. it flopped. Um, which Damn. is kind of yep. hilarious. But back to your uh, <laughs> reviews that you have gotten. Oh. That you have um, received from your friends. Shout out to my buddy Torian. He hates my fucking guts, but he's my friend. He said he went and saw it. And he said visually it was one of the most amazing things he's ever saw. Yeah. But he just did like story wise, he just felt like it was flat. Did you ask him if it was on par with how he felt watching the first one? No, I didn't. But I will. I actually will. I'll follow. Because that's my curiosity. Like, I remember watching the first one and being like, yes, this is visually very rad. This is a fun thing to watch in the movies. Like, this is enjoyable. But I don't know. I'm wondering if people are having that sensation all over again. It seems like they are. I don't know. I... It, it's one of those things because I honestly, I think it's the the only thing out in theaters right now. So it's, oh, if you're going to go to the movies over the holidays, this is what you're going to see, which is a great fucking target drop date. Yep. If you're going to try and make a billion dollars, because, you know, what do people do over the holidays? They go to the movies, families together, blah, 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 blah. But I haven't really heard a lot of hype, you know? It's just kind of like, did you go see Avatar? No. You going? Maybe. You know, like nobody's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I'm going fucking Friday. Yeah, I thought the promotional stuff was always, I, I commented on this on pre- prior episodes, but I always thought the promotional stuff was lackluster. Mm-hmm. Like I never thought the trailers are very good. Even the no. ones right up before the movie came out were still kind of really yeah. a rehash of the same. Still don't know what the movie's about. There's like black avatars, a green or whatever yeah. the fuck they are. And, <clears throat> and then the weekend started pushing Avatar super heavy, which I thought was super. The strange. weekend, yeah. Is he on the soundtrack? He has a song for it. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's getting a check. Which, I mean, get your money. Yeah. It felt like a cheap thing though, because <laughs> it doesn't. It's not like the is weekend a, and Avatar are like two type of brands that will. I like, don't feel like they really go together. It no. seems more like somebody at Disney was like, "We gotta get the top. We gotta pop get the artists. top pop artist right now. Doesn't matter who it is. Just tell me." Who yeah, it Avatar is. gives me more like and Taylor like, oh, Swift, Beyonce. You know that might kind of be like James Bond, where they kind of pick the the popular of the popular right <clears throat> at that moment when the movie's kind of around the movie's coming yeah. out. I feel like The weekend's better suited for James Bond. <laughs> yeah, 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 that too, yeah. Yes. It's like the Black Eyed Peas yes. are for Avatar. Yeah. Yes. There you go. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get, I get that. Yeah, something you know, like that. Poppy. Yeah, something something like goofy and yeah, fun. safe and weird. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Pharrell. Oh, yeah, that'd hey, be good. You know. That could go. 
could see that. Yeah. I don't know. Unless but, he's doing some minion shit. I don't know. Yeah. <coughs> Justin Timberlake. There you go. That's fourth Trolls film. <laughs> I actually bought the, the the last one last year. The Trolls movie. It was fucking dead. Oh, the, I thought you meant the soundtrack. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he does. Did, did he do the yeah, Trolls? Yeah, he did oh, Trolls shit. 1 and 2. I think he did like the whole soundtrack. He does like uh, all the music for it. He basically stopped putting out his own music and just started like doing, doing it on the Trolls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's him singing. Like, it's his music. They're giving him $50 million it's for ju- shit. It's Justin Timberlake, but the lyrical content is of the day in a life of a troll. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm not mad at it. No. <clears throat> he's doing He's doing fine. Yeah. He's not mad. He's good. He's Isn't good. that where Can't Stop the Feeling? Wasn't that from Trolls? <clears throat> uh, I feel like that was... I don't know. Uh, stand by. Yeah, the lead single from the soundtrack to the film... Trolls. Queen Poppy? Yeah. Can't Stop go. the Feeling. Yeah. My gosh. Yep. Actually, the album, the album cover is... is yeah. That is... A, Perfect. Okay. Yeah, or the single cover, rather. JT at the bottom. Yep. JT. There it is. All right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> the reviews on Avatar lackluster outside of the fact that it's very fun to watch. So, it's kind of to be expected. This yeah. is kind of what everybody thought, more or less. But... You talked uh, to anybody seen it? I've not. I've not. Everybody that I've spoken to about it has kind of gotten caught up on the runtime, if I'm going to be honest. That's three hours. And the last one was long. It wasn't three hours, but it was long. 310 is a, that's a big commitment during the holidays. So maybe after the holidays, you know what I mean? Like maybe, I don't know, the week after Christmas, in between there and, you know. I just don't know if I have it in me, you know, three hours. Yeah, it's a full. It's a full day. Two hours forty two was For the, the last one. movie. Yeah, the first. And one. that shit was long. Yeah, so this has got yeah. a half hour on that. Yep. Yeah. No. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not Batman sure. Batman was rough. That shit was also three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have you seen? We'll get off Avatar soon because neither of us have really seen it. We can't really contribute anything meaningful to this conversation. But have you seen James? Cameron's like hot takes. He's been recently not as all of over recent. The place. No. He's been just lighting people up. He's been what do you say this time? Super pissed Fucking. at everybody. Everybody that has anything like anything to say about Avatar, he's like just shut the hell up. Well, he's get been the, get away he's, from me. He's just I feel like he's getting like old and wasn't now. he doing that before the film yeah. was released too? He was, but he's like super okay. worked up now. And you would think that Disney would be like, "Yo, shut the fuck up!" Like he's, we're all in the same shit. Like yeah. if they make money, we get more money to put out your shit. So somebody like, asked him in an interview, they were like, "Well, it's it's a really long movie," and he was like. Just get comfortable going to the bathroom. You'll catch what you missed the next time you see it around in the theaters. Like, what? What the fuck? Yeah, it's, he's just gotten so like salty about it. There was an article about Matt Damon. Apparently, he was uh, supposed to be the lead in Avatar and he was talking, it was like a $250 million like contract or something. He missed it because he was trying to do a Bourne movie or whatever. Oh, but shit. some, like, he was quoted as being like, ah, oh, it was so bummed. Like, I'll, you know, like I'll, I'm bummed that I missed that opportunity. It's like my biggest, like biggest is. financial mistake or whatever. Oh, I've ever I mean, made. okay. And like uh, James Cameron was like, he needs to like shut the hell up and just get back to acting or something. What? Like he needs to grow Cameron, up. Cameron <clears throat> said, "quote He's beating himself up over this." And I really think, you know, Matt, you're kind of like one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you missed a golden, like I think that's akin to like Will Smith saying. You know, one of the biggest, his biggest mistake was passing up on the Matrix. He was supposed yep, to be Neo. Right. And like, sometimes you just miss it. You just miss the mark. And you're just like, damn, if I had to did that. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm big. True. But like, if if I had to did that, I'd be like, or I would be who I am way sooner than, you know, than whenever I got there. But like, you know, you you, you make your own path. I don't this, know, like, this setup here was from Matt Damon saying, quote, I'll go down in history. You'll never meet an actor who turned down more money. Damn. Damn. I think he got, um, I think he was in like mass contract too. He was going to get percentages like Ooh. on the back end of Avatar too as well. <clears throat> like I think that was originally a part of the contract. That's a Patrick Mahomes contract. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Pretty brutal. Um, <clears throat> this is not on the uh, like notes for this week, but he apparently there is a movie coming out. Um, it might not be like a full length movie, but James Cameron did a movie on the controversy of whether or not Jack and Rose could have both floated on the door in the end of Titanic. Where though? <laughs> to go so, where? 
Look, you can look this up, Josh. But they oh, had yeah. like they had like all these like scientists and like they recreated everything. Like it's too like it's incredibly accurate. They had scientists and all the kinds of like tried every like combination possible. He was basically trying to put to rest the argument that they both could have floated on the door and survived. And essentially, the point of it all is is that they proved like scientifically that they would not have both been able to survive if they. If they both to. got on there. Yeah, that it was impossible and that like it was accurate. Like the movie was accurate for the situation. Mm. Um, we've done a scientific study <laughs> to put this whole thing to rest and drive a stake through its heart once and for all, he said, referring to the many years of fan theories that insist one or both uh, could have made it. Uh, yeah, so he's claiming, we have since done a thorough forensic analysis with a hypothermia expert Shut. who reproduced the raft from the movie, and we're going to do a little special on it that comes out in February. There you go, dude. <clears throat> he's just shutting it down. <laughs> it, continues, I just it continues, if you'll, if you'll allow. No, please. Uh, this is an interview with today. Uh, quote, we took two stunt people who were the same body mass as Kate and Leo, which, uh, why... I don't, anyway, uh, and put sensors all over them and inside them. And we put them in ice inside water and we them. tested to see whether they could have survived through a variety of methods. And the answer was, there was no way they both could have survived. He adds, only one could survive. <laughs> what the fuck? Yes, right. My, right, my concern here is fuck. <laughs> we put sensors on them and in them. <laughs> well, you gotta, you gotta monitor their body temperatures internally. Of course, that's when you right. see when they're going to freeze up. Yep. Yeah, I get I it. I was just like a thermometer in the mouth. <laughs> like, that's way, way, way. Nah, dude, this is camera no, and this can be no, scientific. Spared yeah, no expense. You're not sticking the fucking. Spared no expense, dude. <laughs> The Titanic dildo in my did ass. You just to the, get the did you see the? Did you see the thing? Uh, <laughs> get my when somebody called out the fact that like the stars, the patterns of the stars in Titanic were inaccurate for where like the boat was at the time, like during like that year or whatever. So he redid all of the. I just he did redid not. all of the sky, like all the sky so shots, just, and all the star shots. He's just a a, a manic OCD. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, there was inaccuracies in like the stars above the boat, so they like confirmed it and they redid all those shots and put them in like the newer releases. So it's interesting though, that, that this, that you bring this up at this time and this is very not really related. I mean, it is related in that it's stars. So I just saw on Reddit the other day that, uh, Vincent van Gogh's painting cafe at night, cafe terrace at night, Yeah, this painting. Yeah. Right. All right. The stars in this painting are so accurately positioned that that you can actually see exactly when it was painted. Mm-hmm. And it was like September 16th or 17th in 1888 or something like right, that. Because he and probably like sat there exactly and like, what, look, yeah. at that. So it's interesting sure. that you bring that up, that people are watching this. Because I, when I saw that story, I thought, really, people are paying attention to this. People are in all the way. Yeah. And it's more interesting that they would do it, you know, to a movie. Yeah. It's, it's pretty wild. Like, pretty wild. Go get some pussy. But apparently Rather they did a lot of work at the stars uh, in the movie. initially to try to get it right, and I guess they, they <laughs> And they messed it up, up. yep. Yeah. All right, that's enough on uh, our boy James. Yep. Um, I'll, I will probably get out to an Avatar screening at some point, sooner or later. I mean, if you're going to go to the theater, I feel like you got to- That's a commitment, man. Yes, but I don't know. I, I probably wouldn't wa- – like I don't think I repeat viewed Avatar 1 no. beyond – I think I saw it – I might have seen it twice in theaters. I might have gone with some different people to go see it at the time. Um, but I don't know if I've ever watched Avatar outside of the theater, if I'm being honest. So I feel like if I'm going to see it, if I'm ever going to make the effort to watch Avatar 2, I might as well make the effort to watch it in the theater. I guess that's my point. So he'll probably get my 15 bucks. I remember my second viewing being on – I was at a friend of a a family member's, a friend of the family member's house. And he had just got like a big screen plasma and that was like hot at the time. Oh, hell yeah. And he had Avatar on DVD. Yup. And it looked, you remember going, you remember like when we were younger, like walking into like Best Buy and like- The Magnolia Center. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And like doing the TV stroll and shit and like shit just looked so fucking crazy and that's what it looked to me like it it just they always had those like four sets in the back (laughs) yeah (laughs) and that was like my second view and i just was like it looks way different than the movies but i'm still not interested like whatever um but yeah i think that's the only other time i saw it yeah twice so that's i don't know i feel like that's more but you're not you're i'm not excited 50 50 on it you're not gonna go 
I will wait for it to be on Disney Plus in March. <laughs> that's your that's your move. Yeah. This thing ain't coming on Disney Plus anytime soon. You don't think? No. Hell no. It's not after what not after what Tom Cruise has done. That shit just came to James Paramount. Cameron is he'll be damned if this doesn't ride in theaters longer than Maverick. There's no way. They put they just put Maverick back in theaters. Like why though? It's on Paramount now. I know. And they did a whole like media because push. People keep going to it and they're it's gonna make like two billion trying to make more money off it but that's my point like if tom cruise is doing that that, good (laughs) you're not this isn't hitting streaming for another two years it's that fucking good it's not happening all right 52 minutes ago um yeah 52 minutes ago uh polygon estimated that it would hit streaming earlier rather than later in 2023 what uh avatar Uh, Avatar. avatar 2 i mean who knows um, it could arrive on the plat at the on the platform as early as January thirtieth. Damn. However, mm. it really depends on the Christmas Christmas performance. Bomb. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I guess if it bombs horribly, then maybe they start. I just cannot see it. I can't. I don't just don't know why they would set themselves up to, to for, which uh, such a high ticket. He's James Cameron's been saying this whole time that it's a it's a movie that like builds over time. Like Avatar 1, when that first came out, it made 77 million the first weekend and it didn't really peak until after several weeks of being in the theater. Like 232 the days, the original yeah. movie was in Almost theaters. Almost the entire year? Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. That's my point. Skies. Yeah. I don't, this would really, people would have to just stop going like next week for this to hit in January, I would think. I would hate to work for that guy. I just feel like he's obsessive. He's he's tough. Yeah, he's real tough. He's a he's yeah, yeah. not great. No. Not great. No, All right, let's move on. Uh, I think our next topic. I could be wrong, but we're, we got a lot of DC stuff. Oh, Are we gonna move. Is there something before? Is there something after Avatar that's not I think DC there was. related? Yes. What is the that? next one is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Oh, the show? okay. Is Very it? good. Yeah. No, no, no. no this no, no, is no, the this movie, movie coming out. Yeah, 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 the trailer came out while we were all sick. Yeah, <laughs> we were all dying. Written here, James Mangold on the defensive claims there are no issues with Indy 5. Yes, because in the last episode, I said there was a lot of reshoots and a lot of unhappy campers, apparently, with how it ended. So, I don't know. TBD. I feel like James Mangold obviously has to say those things. He can't come out and be like, yeah, we botched this and had to shoot 10 different endings. I mean, he's never going to say that. It's his movie. He's got to kind of act like everything's... Uh, up and, up, and, up and ready to rock and roll. But did you watch the trailer? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah. How'd you feel? Um, I still don't know. I, I, first, it looked like a, a, a Indiana Jones movie. Of course. You know, uh, it looked like it kept the integrity of the franchise. Sure. Uh, Harrison, to be in his 80s, still kicking ass. Uh, apparently, there's some young uh, shots of him. And they did like the whole de aging thing, yeah. Get, get, letting the blood get back to your head, yeah. yeah. I'm hot yeah. <laughs> from this mask. My That's face. what's making you hot. Surprisingly, yeah. The it was band, cutting off the circulation. The so band around my cheeks is like it's really interesting. Yeah. All right, it's like it's that it's, it's tight. <laughs> All right, you know I mean? yeah. All right. Otherwise, I feel Let's get you back in the game. <laughs> I feel infinitely better with this not on my head anymore. All right. Well, Jesus didn't show up. <laughs> anyway, All right, sorry. So. Back to Indy Five. <laughs> um, I didn't mean to distract with the removal of my heart yet. Yeah, Jesus is not coming. Um, <laughs> oh, Indiana Jones. Yeah, it. You know, it. It looked like an Indiana Jones movie. They did the de aging thing for uh, for Harrison in like one of the parts of it. You know, he's cracking the whip. Yeah. 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 All right, I'm yeah. bored. Yeah. Yeah. I'll watch Great. it. Great. I thought it looked good. Yeah. I would definitely fine. go see it. You know, TBD on the story. I don't know. I also like Phoebe Waller Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. She's she has writing credits on so many TV shows. Sometimes just one off episodes, sometimes mm-hmm. like whole series. Like but, um just who else does it? Bryce Dallas Howard. Yes. Yes. Does a lot of shit like yes. That. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Look at us knowing our stuff. <laughs> Here we go, here we go. But um, yeah, I was, you know, given the end of Indy 4 and then this kind of taking a whole new direction, like, mm-hmm. eh, whatever, I'm fine. It, there's no like crazy like lore to Indiana Jones. I feel it's like true. every movie kind of is a new adventure for him. And yep. None of them really are linchpins to the other. So fuck it. 
it's a it's a fun it's a thrill ride. It's fun. It's action. Mm -hmm. it's, got, it's got a little Nazi stuff in there or whatever, and you know whatever. It's, you know. All right. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, I thought the trailer looked good. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Harrison Ford. I'm excited for it. Kicking Nazi ass. I'm with it. Yeah. What's up? All <laughs> right. Next item. Uh, do you want to talk about this? Let's talk about this real quick. <laughs> Forgot it's the great party at Jay Riddle. The boys. Thoughts. Tell me the truth. Um, Be honest. Did I like it. I like it a Detroit. lot on the front end, but then the, there's a back end taste, and I'm just not settled on yet. Okay. But I like it. I'm just not. I don't know if I'm just not familiar with what that taste is. So it's a very uh, unique. Yeah, it's very different. But it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's very good. I just don't know what that taste is. It's kind of it. Yeah. Kind of uh, industrial. Yeah, I was gonna. I yeah, mean, like, it. it yeah, tastes like, like Detroit. <laughs> like when you when you taste really shitty alcohol, and I'm not saying this is really shitty alcohol, but like you drink a really low quality vodka, and you have that alcohol flavor yeah. to it. Like that's kind of what I'm kind of getting. I mean, there's definitely more flavor to it, also. Yeah. But yeah. you get the peatiness, you know that. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, almost. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be pulled over after having this. You, no, this hits. Yeah, it's yeah. smacking. Yeah, yep. it hits. It's super, like, it, it's got a lot of punch to it. This is Like, you're that. drinking, drinking a man's drink. This is alcohol. Yeah, this is alcohol. This is the this back. Is alcohol. This is the yeah. backseat driver. Yeah. It tastes like you've been working at the factory for a second. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. it's a yeah, yeah. Which, you know, here's another thing. And this might be the peatiness. This might be, like, my n lack of knowledge yeah. around these flavor profiles. But- it almost tastes like plastic. Cool. Like you open mm -hmm. a, a brand new box of, you know, whatever. Rubber. And, you like know, rubber floor rubber, mats. Yeah, when you order rubber. Yeah. Rubber Amazon. Floor, right? I just got rubber floor mats oh, for okay. my truck. Great. And I, that that's the smell. That got, I, it. Yeah. got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. It's like a plasticizer yeah. or something. Like a, yeah. Yeah. Elegant smokiness. I don't know. That's really the main fl flavor profile. Sweet, robust flavor of corn bourbon with elegant smokiness. Yeah, I think it's this. I would agree. I think it's probably the smoke piece that is really lingering, and it's probably something that you know, if you're super into smoke and that taste, you know, probably sure works it might for work you. well. Yeah, but I know what you mean. I agree. This is not a easy sipper. This yeah. is. I need a drink. Yeah, I, I, need, need, a drink. I need it to mean. Something. I had a long day. I don't want to feel it. <laughs> <laughs> I need. I need to forget. What happened? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. But all right. All right. Uh so Moving we can on. we can move to DC if you want. You got one more thing though uh, before okay. DC is okay. the Oppenheimer trailer. The Oppenheimer trailer. There's so many trailers and so many things. That's yep. the movie with all these people in it. Oh, come on. That's uh, the all yeah. these Yeah, that, there are people in that film, yes. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? It's a lot of famous people yes. in it. Isn't Robert Downey Jr. in it? It's black That's and white. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Emily Blunt, Robert Emily, Downey Jr., yeah. Matt Damon, Matt Damon, Remy Matt Malik, Damon. Florence Pugh. Wait a minute. There's a rule on the show now. Every time we say Matt Damon's name, Matt that's Damon. it. Matt Damon. Yeah. Yep. This is um, Christopher Nolan. Yeah, That's Christopher Nolan. Disney movies. Abraham. Yes. Abraham. All those people you just listed are in that? Yeah, man. Yeah. A lot of people. They're actually high up. Cillian Murphy, Emily Blunt, okay, I Robert Downey the... Jr., Matt Damon, Remy Malik, Florence Pugh. I missed the Cillian Murphy on. one. Yeah. And I was like, because I thought for oh, a second, I thought he was a gift. You know? I thought you were saying Matt Damon was like the lead for no. a second. And I was like, what? I could understand think? why you'd think that though. Yeah, Sorry. he is a leading yep. man. He yeah. needs to get over it. But Cillian Murphy, scarecrow. Yeah, uh, trailer looked pretty rad. It, uh, yeah. I think it premiered actually Thursday night. Thursday night football game. Nobody was really expecting it. Generally, there's like a little bit of an anticipation. You know, most uh, media outlets get a heads yeah. up and we're going to see a trailer, and they're like, "Oh, it's Friday. Keep an eye out." But it just played during. There's been Thursday a lot of hype about this movie. I didn't realize it didn't come out until July. It's next Nolan, year. though, man. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, there is a lot of hype. A, What's his last shit? Was it Tenant? Tenant. Yep. I still don't know what happened. Tenant. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> oh god, that's a tricky one. I. I bought it. Have too. to go back and revisit that. I have read a lot about it, and there's a lot of like guides and stuff online now that like if you go to watch the movie. I don't. I mean, whether or not you should have to do this with the movie is debatable. Ridiculous. But, yeah. Um. Apparently, there are like some, like some supplemental materials that you can kind of like 
read alongside watching it and it'll help like really break it all down. Some people feel like it's, uh, after having, you know, spent time with it, like a very, uh, intelligent, like exceptionally like well-crafted film. I don't know. I remember watching it and feeling like I don't really know what happened, but well, we both got a yep. touch of the tip. I got to, yeah, I got to get back after it. Um, I got to spend some more time with it. Don't look maybe, at me. Don't look at me. When you said that. I'm not go. I'm not going down with this boat. We're all in this boat. Today, it's okay. Guys. The black guy can say it. <laughs> Uh, but Oppenheimer. Um, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. It, what? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> we can start this. Oh. Um, yeah, man, whatever. Christopher Nolan. It's my guy. I'm on board. He's my guy. And he's got all these people in it that I like. Fuck it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Right. It does contain Gary Oldman plays <laughs> Harry Truman. Yeah. Matthew Modine's in it. I love Robert Downey. This will be his first. Yeah, Kenneth his- Branagh also. His first movie since Iron since Endgame, right? Nope. No. Nope. He, he has was a, in something else. He has a he? movie out on uh, Netflix right now. Him and his dad. It's like a documentary, but he's oh. in it. Uh, sir. S- S- senior sir. I think S R S R dot yeah, is what senior. it's right. It's, uh, it says S R dot. Yeah, pricing. Yeah, you're right. No, but that's sorry. what it means, right? S R dot. No, you're right. No, you you're definitely right. Senior. Sorry yeah, that's what that's my means. first day. December second on Netflix. Had a lot of PTO. There you so, go. Yeah, it's like getting back to work and don't know your password. <clears throat> That's correct, right? It's one two three four five six seven eight A. <laughs> one two three four five six seven eight B. <laughs> Those idiots. <laughs> Hashtag connect. Oh god, I love those guys. DC. Shake up, yeah. mm-hmm. DC. We're finally there. Yeah, there's a lot on. I keep there's bringing a lot it up. on DC. It's a, finally yeah. there. You want to just get there? All right. So James Gunn is head of DC with Peter Safran. Is that his name? That's I think that's his name. Sounds correct. Sounds correct. And they are just cleaning house. They're canceling shit left and right. Um, I feel like to be fair, most of the things that they have canceled were already canceled. Trash. Like they shit already we were on the rocks, and a lot of people were just holding on for dear life. I don't know where the yeah. rock. I don't know when the rock got involved. <laughs> why he got involved? But he thought he was going to bring it all back. Yeah, fuck that. And uh, uh, his resurgence really got just wrecked when James Gunn came through. So I think it, I don't know what it started with. All right, so let's start with The Rock. Um, recently, The Rock did this long fucking narcissistic post about Black Adam. Well, it started with him unfollowing Black Adam the movie, uh, Twitter account, all right, what are the internet accounts. Then he unfollowed uh, Warner Brothers Studio. Then he put out a post saying, I've spoken with James Gunn and, you know, it's my guy and what yeah. I, I wish for, you know, all the success and we're, we, we're going to shelve the character of Black Adam because it's not in the first phase of the storytelling, but Black Adam will return or some shit like that. So Black Adam's on the shelf. We'll probably never see that fucker again. No. It's never come Henry back. Cavill comes back in Black Adam as Superman. Only for fucking a month later <laughs> to put out a post that he will not be back as <laughs> Superman. <laughs> so he's gone. Gal Gadot, she's out. Wonder Woman's done. She's cooked. And I just think that fucking Jason Momoa is at home right now. <laughs> <laughs> Scratching the couch, just hoping James Dunn, James Gunn doesn't fucking call him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ezra Miller still don't know still, where he is. He still has a fucking job. And he still got a job. He still got a job. He's the only person that's Yo. not been canned in this whole thing. You know? You know, toxic is as toxic does. They got, some, they got some shit in common. You know what I'm saying? God, uh, that had to have been line one for James Gunn. They're like, Ezra Miller, what are we going to do with him? He's like, I, Keep I think we might. <laughs> <laughs> Something about that guy. I like him. Right yeah. I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> he's got it, though. Um, we don't know where he is. We don't know what he's doing, but I think he's got it. Yeah. He, they they sent the white suits after him. He's He's been on hush, hush. But yeah, every everybody's on pretty. I mean, well, they haven't canceled um, Shazam, but all the ca- all the cameos have been cut out of the movie. Yeah, um, I mean, this got to be the last of all of them. Yeah, it has to be Blue Beetle too. Oh whatever. yeah, that's coming out. So he's letting a few things go through. 
Well, and, yeah, I mean, I think they already like exist for the most part, right? Yeah. You kind of you have to let them, yeah, find their way out. I, I suppose, think he's right? just gonna let it ride out the stuff he can let ride out, and the stuff that had pre-production legs, he's like, cripple that shit, fuck that, no, no go. I'm not, we're not green lighting anything else. Well, I want all this shit out. I want a clean house, and um, actually, you know what? As a as a comic book enthusiast, and you know, I feel like we're in the golden golden age of comic book movies. Do it, man. If you're gonna do it, don't don't slow roll it. Don't give us the, the MCU shit. Just come out the fucking gate with whatever you're gonna come out with. Do away with the old shit. And now it's DC Studios. I'm happy. Yeah, but I think that's what we're gonna get is an MCU rehash. I do, but you know, I, the MCU did all the slow roll. Like everybody got a movie. Sure. I think his iteration. It's just gonna just come out. It's just gonna be just superheroes every fucking where. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Not a lot of origin stories. No, I don't think we're gonna. No. I I do not want to see Bruce's mother and those fucking pearls yeah. ever again. Yeah, yeah. You know how many times I've seen that in my life? Yeah, that's true. I don't want to see that shit. That's anymore. true. That's true. So yeah. Um, and now does that downplay like the casting of everybody if these characters are just these characters? Because traditionally speaking. There's a lot of hype surrounding who is going to be yeah, this character. Yeah. There's a lot of buildup around their it's film, very, their entry into the MCU. It's very James it's very Bond aspect. Very of like who is going to play this person? But if everybody's just in it and we're expected to kind of just know who everyone is, yeah. is it as meaningful to have, you know, I think if the content is good, I don't think it did really matters. I think if you come out, with a new Justice League movie. Yeah. And every one of these actors just fucking kills it. Mm -hmm. And the movie is amazing. We're going to anticipate who whatever the next Superman movie is. Mm. We're going to anticipate who, who it doesn't matter who it is. It could be fucking Oprah. Yeah. But if she fucking killed it as as <laughs> um <laughs> fucking Wonder Woman, somehow James Gunn made it work, we're going to be excited for the next Wonder Woman. Of course. You know, so I I don't know I I have I have I have an overarching faith in James Gunn. Everything he's touched has been amazing. Been so pretty solid. Yeah, pr pretty solid. I won't say me. Pretty pretty solid. Has he done anything in the like more serious space? Like a more of like a drama? Like Batman has traditionally been a little bit more serious in tone. I feel like James Gunn has always been a little bit more of an oddball. Yeah, with didn't his he do that? Movies and shows. Movies that and movie shows. about the, it was like a child Superman. Brightburn? That, Brightburn. Yeah. <clears throat> I think I that's the it. only other thing. It was fucking amazing. It was a horror film, wasn't it? Yeah. It was supposed to be like scary. It was his take on if Superman was bad. Uh, a bad kid. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty good. Yeah. You never saw it? It was pretty good. Yeah. It was basically like Superman was not raised to be like a good dude. A good guy. <laughs> he was. He just had problems as a kid. He needed a counselor. Um, there's <laughs> also there's also a movie here called The Belko Experiment. What's that? Yeah. You saw that? that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a film that he did with Peter Safran. Oh, yeah. so this Peter Safran is his guy. Um, that, that was like The Office Experiment, wasn't it? Where they had all the people in the office building? Uh, like, oh, yeah. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I saw that. I saw that. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so he's got a good track record. All right. What else is going on over there? Well, it's TBD on what's happening with the Batman. Um, and obviously the Joker sequel is in production. They just released some yeah, images of that. Yeah, just let that go. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure if they've – if they've if they green light, green lit a second Batman. I saw from Culture Crave, who is a – I'd say a credible source where I get a lot of my info. And they said um, that gun is – talking to Matt Reeves about how to incorporate Pattinson's Batman universe into what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But then James Gunn retweeted that and was like, no, this is a terrible fucking source. Like yeah. he literally said that, like, this is a terrible fucking source. I'd never say such a thing. So I don't know if he's trolling yeah, no. or what. Uh, I don't think he wants anything to do with Matt Reeves' Batman. I think he's just going to let that live as its own thing. And I've, honestly, I feel like with Batman, you really can. You really can have two Batman. You yeah. can have this this Matt Reeves universe, and then you yeah. can have your your DC 
super human universe with a different Batman and just not lean into the Batman stories and just have him there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, shit like that. Yeah, quarter bows, shit like that. Yeah. All right. I think that's it. I think very I good. So I think much DC, I don't know. So much DC action. Yeah, but the Flash, Flash is still coming, as we're knowing. Yeah, twenty twenty six. I love it. If they can find him, if I think <clears> they got him. <throat> well, yeah, yeah, right. Which him. which jail? Right? <laughs> they got him. Man. He's not. Going All right. What is beyond DC now that we've. Okay. That. Um, that was a big chunk of the list. Yeah, it was a big chunk. Uh, we got Tommy, Tommy Cruz. Tommy. He just, uh, he just tweeted Top something, right? He's been Mission. putting out all these promo videos. Yep. He's been hyping up Mission Impossible. He did a big stunt video showing some of the new stunts coming out. He did a video that was like thanking everybody for going to see Maverick where he jumped out of a plane. Yeah. And he's basically on this like, I don't know, it's like a little press tour, I guess, his own of his own making. And he's just doing a bunch of crazy it's stuff. Kind of Surprised, weird. <laughs> it's got to be amazing to be that and fucking rich. Yeah, he's just so stoked. <laughs> he's, I don't. I mean, Tom Cruise has always been a very excitable guy. I think you made the joke about the couch. Did you make some yeah. Oprah couch joke <laughs> yeah. a few episodes ago? And he's yeah. like, right. It's like every day of his life. Is, there's a he just hopes for a couch. He, he just can hopes on, right? to fucking just do something and just. He's, he's very excitable, and I don't know. If he is, if it's the Scientology, the what? Tatens, Tatens are high. high. He's sounds good. Yeah, man, he's just. I like it, man. You know, whatever. TC the goat. You know, I fucking love him. So, but you know, it scares me. You're getting a little older. You can't just be doing. He yeah, but (laughs) he seems like he's you know doing all right. Well, at a certain point, he'll go too far, and then we won't have to worry about what he does after that. One of that, my you know? friends said that to me in a text the other day. He's like, he's going to end up shooting his next movie with Christopher Nolan, and he's going to kill him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the movie is still going to come out, and we're all going to go see it. And that's <laughs> that's going to be his magnum opus and shit. Yeah. It'll be like his, that's the way he wants to go that's out. That's how he, he wants did, to He did turn 60 this year. Yeah, yo. My yep. gosh. Yep. He's like I can't believe he's 60. 60? That's crazy. That's wild. Good for him. Yeah. My god. <laughs> DC the go. <laughs> I still want to I'm so. surprised he doesn't put more stuff out. I mean, maybe that's a part of like his brand, I guess, but you feel like he would just I feel like, yeah, you think he, he would have like two movies a year. He could probably do more shit if he got a stuntman. <laughs> yes, he could. He definitely could. <laughs> yeah, he, could right. he could get he could more movies. He just paid somebody to do that right. shit. Right. He could get more movies yep. out if he just went to the studio, yep. set his, did a Robert Downey Jr., set his lines, did the yeah. green screen, and then got the fuck out of there. He could knock out, what, five Marvel movies a year. Or I mean, I guess he doesn't have to. He's making a lot of money on them, but still. And yeah. you know, that is kind of the brand, though. Like, he takes forever to do one thing. Yeah. And that, Shit gets hyped for years, and you see the footage, and you're like, "What? This is awesome!" Yeah, what? Yeah, Let's go. That's true. So, so you know, I've never, Tom Cruise doesn't have a water movie, right? Um, like, a, like a Navy type I mean, shit. I mean, no, Top Gun I mean, is Top like, Gun is, but it's more aerial. He doesn't sure. have anything like submarines and no shit. Uh, a few good men. What are we doing he there? Does. Yeah. Were those naval officers? I believe so. I think they were. Yeah. Yeah, he needs it with now, this new technology. I don't know if they spent much time on the boat, hmm. though. Yeah. Well, in 2020, him and Jerry Brockheimer became honorary naval aviators. Yeah, that sounds yep. about The right. 35th and 36th honor, honorary naval aviators. That's it? It's only 36 of them? Apparently there are. I mean, who else would be an honorary Navy able aviator? I don't know. I, I, now I'm like, like, I'm like running through right. my, I'm like Bill Clinton. We need the list. <laughs> yeah. I know I'm working on it. Honorary Navy, <laughs> naval aviator list. Here we go. Uh, oh, history.navy.mil, appendix 18, honorary naval aviator designations. Who's on there? Let's see. Let's uh, scrolling, scrolling. I'm just trying to identify if anybody would know. Who's anybody. on your wish list for this list? My wish list for this. Oh my god, dude! I don't know anybody. That's um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> the only person that I think any of us would know 
is Bob Hope. What? Bob yeah. Hope? Bob Hope? Yes. Bob Hope uh, is the 19th honorary naval aviator. Uh, right. Presented in recognition of 45 years of selfless de- uh, dedication to the well-being of those serving our nation. What? Okay. Yeah. Which, I mean. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Michael Bay on there somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> right. <where> the- <laughs> Michael Bay, definitely not. He's uh, blown up enough stuff. Definitely. Vin Diesel, Vin Diesel on there. Not. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got enough of those like military movies. Yeah, he's got to have something. The Rock. Somebody. Come on now. Nope. He did Black Hawk Down. You tell me that's not enough? <laughs> John Claude Van Damme. Was he in the Navy, though, with Black Hawk Down? Doesn't matter. All right. Cuba Gooden Jr. not on there? Good call on that one. No, he would be a diver. He'd be a diver. Yeah. A diver? Yeah. Don't, does the Navy not have divers? Aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Aviators are- that's a f- is that yes. a few good men? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Same fucking movie. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. Yeah. Great. No. Very good. I'm disappointed right. in that list. <laughs> uh, getting back Who'd to that you one want more time. On the list? Uh, some, hit, some heavy hitters, man. Hawk Hogan. Who's done with who's done with TC's done? I mean Because you know TC got in that plane and flew. It's true. Yeah, this is this is true. TC, so TC so this girl. article where I got this from, which it's and not just this article, uh, but as honor quote as as honorary naval aviators, Bruckheimer and Cruz are authorized to wear the wings of gold of a U.S. Navy naval aviator and are entitled to all honors, courtesies, and privileges afforded to naval aviators. You know that jacket is which fire. is which has got to be pretty sweet. I mean, yeah. I don't know what that really means, and I yeah. can't I can't get a good answer. But <laughs> when they include that by name, it's gotta there's got to be some privilege. You get that yep. gold, you get a gold bank card, Gotta be and you can just walk up to any fucking... And it's funny, actually, in this article, they describe the distinction and whatever it is, and the only other person named is Bob Hope. <laughs> <laughs> but is he dead? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> watch, watch, you Google, Bob Hope is still alive. Very alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. 2003. <laughs> oh, oh, Very shit. dead. <clears throat> yep. Okay, he's very dead. Yep. Sorry, Indeed. Bob. Yep. <laughs> R.I.P. Him and Jesus. Happy birthday. Yep, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> beat me to it. Okay. All right, all right. All right. Let's be on Tommy all right. Boy. Last thing, last thing on the list here. Uh, the Last of Us. Uh, the Last of Us trailer. trailer. A lot yeah. of those have dropped. It looked yeah. good. Does look good. Yeah, it looks good. It does look good. Did you play the game? No, but no. I'm familiar. Okay. I've seen right. like walkthroughs. Right. I'm very familiar with the game. I love zombie shit. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with it. I might even like get the game now and just like play it before um so you can just ruin it for yourself you can yeah. do everything that's gonna happen yeah. before you watch it mm-hmm. i get that absolutely i am uh this is like i'm assuming that based on the trailers and what i've seen it does stick relatively close to the game to the game uh, i'm sure there'll be some deviations but this is like the first time where <clears throat> i've ever really i've ever known a story like super thoroughly yeah, yeah, yeah. before the movie came out. Mm. Like I never, I read some Harry Potter, but I didn't like know it and I hadn't like read all of it. Right. Um, Lord of the Rings, same way. Like mm. this is the first time where like, or even like game of Thrones. Like I remember mm. people like were always wait till you see what happens next. I'm like, how do you know? I read the books. Um, <laughs> I know the last of a story like very thoroughly played the video games, both of them like numerous times through uh. read a lot about them. So, I'm interested to okay. see. It's like my first time seeing something that I know what's going to potentially happen next. Okay. So, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Looking forward to it. Okay. Um, all right. Watch lists, which mine is not very. Uh, I, I've watched a lot of stuff since I've seen you last. I have too. And I, I figured we just start talking about it and we'll find our way through. Yeah. It. yeah, yeah. Um, That's fine. I feel like the biggest thing on my watch list in a complete sense would be Andor and White Lotus season two. Which I we both watched. Because like- How about that? I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've watched like th- through all the way. Now, uh, to be fair, on Andor, I think I have one episode left. But uh, White, yeah, White Lotus you, if you If you've seen- the White movie. Lotus two, season two. I've watched all that. That Start shit was finish. good. You want to talk about that? Yeah. You're excited about it. Get your shit together, Portia. You liked it. I loved it. You loved it. Did loved you watch it. one? 
No. Season one. No, it didn't. Me neither. I didn't watch season one either. It, <laughs> it I think that... <laughs> wait, wait, you started it too? <laughs> All right. Yeah, we both started it So too. my understanding <laughs> is... <laughs> Let me preface. It's an anthology series. Yeah. Based right. at this right, right, right. hotel. <clears throat> yeah. This resort. And they're like loosely connected. They are, but they're not like, you're not losing anything by watching them. Two out of and not watching is, one. Is my understanding. Like you will recognize some characters maybe from yeah. prior seasons. Like some run over. But concepts and like the storylines and all they that. They do not attach. They don't yeah. attach. Um, which that's how it was pitched to me essentially. I don't yeah. have any evidence of this other than I watched season two. I have not seen <laughs> This is what was told to me by Chanel, my wife. Yeah. She said, you don't have to. That's what that Emily, was, I was, I was nervous. That's what Emily told me. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to our wives. She went into it and the very first episode and I was like, I don't want to watch it. I haven't watched the first one. And yeah. she's like, you, you don't, don't need, need to. to. And I'm like. I will vouch that I, I, trust I fully <laughs> followed season two. Fully. Without. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wasn't like missing any details. And uh, she said the only character that was back. Yeah. From season one was um I can't remember her name, but the the lady that played uh mm -hmm. what was her name? I can't remember her name either. I don't think he ever really said her name, but um Porsche's boss. Yeah. Stifler's mom. Yep. And she was amazing. Uh but yeah, yeah, man. I the hose one. Um I thought the ending was 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 great. Um, it, it you know didn't really leave any. It left like one hole uh, that I one plot thread that I wasn't really sure about. And was it really Greg or was she tripping? We as the audience are seeing it and we're like, that's Greg. But there's never any confirmation from never like a conclusion. Yeah, 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 from Greg that he was actually in cahoots with this guy mm. to, to off, I would, off her. I would push back on that in the sense that the what took place on the boat yeah. in that episode at the end with everybody kind of like the, the climactic scene of all of them interacting. Right. I would think that if that wasn't the case, if they weren't going to do that to her right. and there wasn't a connection, they would have been more – outspoken about like, Hey, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing that? Like, stop. Yeah, like what's yeah, going yeah. on? Okay. Nobody ever made those act. Nobody yeah. ever made those statements. Everybody was very like, Oh, uh, she knows. She knows the jig yeah. is up and we're after her. That was yeah. what the sense that I got. Yeah. Cause I was kind of running through that in my mind. Like if she ran into the bathroom and stole a bag and like just dipped out, like I would knock on the door and be like, Hey, like what's up? You're tripping. Yeah. Like, are you good? Like, how can we yeah, help? Yeah. Like what's wrong now? If obviously I was going to kill her and I felt like my plan had just, you know, just been unfurled in front of me. Yeah. I feel like my approach might be a little bit different. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I think it was. I think it was well written. Though. I think it was somewhat confirmed by that. That's just IMO, yeah. you know, in my, in my opinion. <laughs> but yeah, it felt like a, uh, I don't know, kind of like a soap opera is what it yeah, reminded yeah, me yeah, of. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And there Absolutely. was, there was uh, you know, Emily got really invested in it because there was like a big pool going around amongst a lot of her friends. Of like, like who was going to die and stuff. Yeah. And there was like money involved, like a, you know, wow. like we all put in like five bucks or whatever. And we like, guess who's going to die. Invested. Okay. So to preface, cause I don't feel like Josh knows this, but no. the concept mm -hmm. of the show or at least of season two, my understanding it's of season one is the same way. <clears throat> the first like five minutes of the show basically reveals that somebody is dead, but not who. And then the and then after that five minutes, it's like oh, and then it's like it rewinds the clock, and it's like a week. Got prior. it. A week before. So yep. your the whole season is basically leading up to that first five minutes. So basically, the idea is that you're kind of it's a murder mystery. You're supposed to try to figure out who in the end yeah. ultimately is murdered. Got so it. there's like all of these people that are putting all these pools together, trying to guess and like fill in who they think is you know right. Read that Understood. at the end of the show. Got it. Very good. Um, my only. The only like criticism I have of it in that sense is that there really is like Emily was watching every episode with like she was very invested. Like fine tooth comb. Like paying all, too much attention oh, to yes. things. Yeah, so, like, yeah, yeah, all yeah. the yeah, details. Got it. Like everything. And they do put in a lot of distractors. Yeah, yeah. 
le- like they do put in a lot of like misguiding pieces that you kind of get invested in. But then at the end, permission granted. at the end, the person that dies, it really has like, there was no way to put this puzzle together. Like it was just very, oh, okay. at the end, somebody dies, but it could have been anybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. The yeah. lead up was mainly entertainment. Not so much. Yes. Un- unraveling. Correct. There was yeah, no, okay. yeah, there was no way to discern. Like you could pay super close attention in episode, you know, one through five. And you five, still would never know. But by episode six, you still would not have any clue who it was. There's just no way, regardless of the amount of time you spend investigating. Um, which I always feel a little. I went very heavy. Off put by that. Yeah. 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 You really committed. That was a bad, bad judgment. Where did that come from? Did you see that? Mistake, yeah. Was that a lightning? It landed right on your, on the edge of your, right here on your chair. Well, that was a wee, a wee bug. Yep. Mm. All right. Anyway, so you liked it. Very you really much enjoyed so, it. Man. I thought enjoyed. it was fine to watch. I enjoyed watching it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I thought I didn't it was think shot it was, beautifully. Yeah. That's all true. Um, it's very fun to watch. You know, was, easy to watch. It was a very, a very comparable watch. Some like me and my wife mm. could just kind of just get yeah. together and just, um, you know, sit together yes. and watch it. It's very, yeah. and it's not too long. I think and, it's, and it's not, and the characters are intriguing enough that uh, it, it's very character driven. Yes, it's very character driven. Um, my man, uh, what's his name? There was, uh, I, I really enjoy Aubrey Plaza. I always have since Parks and Rec. But uh, the guy she was married to in the show. I, I don't know. know. I'm not going to remember any of their Anybody. names. I only I'm know Aubrey. Ethan. 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 There we go. Uh, yeah, Ethan was her husband. He did a fantastic job in episode, what, five? Where he was just starting to lose it. Mm. And he went and fought um, Theo James in the, in the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's like every 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 person on that cast had a moment. Yeah, where they were just, uh, just just they just took it to the next level. Even my boy, um, the guy Portia was seeing the the nephew. Mm-hmm. His he, he had a shining moment where he you know got drunk. Yeah, and then in the hotel he's kind of like telling her like, you don't understand. Yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. in too deep and I can't get out of this. Like he he had a really revealing moment. Yeah, I, I feel like that that's awesome. also affirmation of what you were saying right. earlier yeah. that things aren't what they on the up and up yeah. on that on that side of the story. Yeah, right? Palermo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that guy is he's, he's a villain. He's a villain of all villains. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 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 So, Andor, Andor. Yeah, I got one episode left on Andor. Uh, I will say, I think. It is the, uh, it's probably my favorite yeah. Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's tough. All right, I'm going to back up even further. Episode one, two, and three from mm-hmm. the movie perspective, all right? That's my like exposure to Star Wars as a kid. That was like the first thing that I saw was <clears throat> was those was those three movies. Okay. I had seen. So did you say one, two, and three? One, two, and three. Like when I was younger, though, I went to the theater and saw those, and that was like my first really meaningful connection with Star Wars. I had seen four, five, and six through like friends or being at people's houses or on TV or Stayed whatever. On TNT, mm-hmm. but it's not like. <laughs> Yeah. I never went and saw him in the theater, right? Yeah. No, no. I heard never. the hype but didn't understand the hype. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Very same, much so. Same with me. Yeah. Very much so. And then obviously the newer movies, I saw those. Uh wasn't crazy about those. I just, you know, wasn't big into yeah. them. Um but they weren't my, that great. long story short, all of the movies I've always felt were a little hokey and a little just kind of goofy. And I think that mm. there was some intent in that. Oh, like, absolutely. I think that that was like an yeah. intentional thing. Yeah, very much so. Um so I never connected with those on a deeper level. Like it has always kind of had, I always struggled with star Wars in that sense. This is the first thing that star Wars has probably done that I feel like was really, really good from like a cinematic standpoint, storytelling standpoint. Like this makes sense to me more than like the movies. Because it had a element of, uh, it had very much, it was real. It was had very much of an element of realism in a fantasy world. Yeah. Like this guy could just not win. Yeah. Right. Like every time he went to to get the big score, he was prevented by this over eclipsing, uh, 
shawl of the empire. Yeah. And it, it just, it, it really spoke to the type of grasp they had over the entire galaxy. It was mm-hmm. like even a lowly thief can't even get his, get, get ahead because of all of the bullshit that the empire has in place all, yeah. and all over the galaxy. And it yeah. gave me, it gave me, you know, Shawshank Redemption, prison break type vibes. Yeah, and the, the and this time. feels a lot more like a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah, comparison yeah. to Boba Fett or Mandalorian. Mandalorian. So yeah. those two feel very much like those are very fun. They're very like Western kind yes. of style. Like every episode kind of is its own they, little mini they, adventure. They still anchor in fantasy. Like yeah. this is in a fantasy world, but yeah. it, it's it's still like still real i yeah. still felt real yeah yeah, yeah 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 so i i don't know for me this was this has been i think the best representation at least in my experience of star wars which is a weird thing i know that that's probably like heresy for a lot of people to well, say but i like watch it and i'm like even even like the political aspects yeah, of all it was, of it, it was great um I like that. I find myself caring about that mm-hmm. in this, whereas in the movies, I never gave a shit about any no. of that. Like it just never made sense to me, and I was always kind of just like, eh, "This feels half like I, feels kind of half-assed." Like a lot of these yeah. aspects of Star Wars, you it's know? not needed. Yeah, but this is the first time where I really felt a connection with like the political struggles of what's going on and how it translates to the rest of the galaxy. The rest of the galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was very much. Um, I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so yeah. much, man. It was, and it's long. I mean, it is long. It's a longer oh, yeah, it's show. A long watch, yeah. It's certainly a little bit slower. This is this is one show that I actually am really glad that I didn't try to watch week to week. I think oh, I would have torture. I think for me. I would have really struggled. I should have waited. And I think it I probably would have not liked it as much. Yeah, because I every every show ends kind of a, as a cliffhanger. Like, yeah, and. But I, it, for me, it's more about like the pacing of it. I really wanted to, I want to be able to like invest in like two or three hours of it because I feel like I want to, I, I want to like, if, if I check out every 45 minutes, mm-hmm. I kind of lose a little bit of what just happened. Yeah. So you can, because the dialogue can sometimes get very political. Yeah. And if you're, you, you can kind of like turn away and come back and kind of not really care. Yeah. Like some parts of it, I'd like a, what the, the Senator, I didn't really care. About what she was saying, yeah. Um, I just was, I was really, really invested in like Cassian's struggle, yeah. And, and that's it's. I mean, that's it's his all show, so really good. Be, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. all really good. Um, but it's just it's it speaks volumes to be able to have empathy for a person and and kind of know what type of struggle they're going through in a fantasy world. Like it's still a Star Wars world. There's still robots and aliens and lasers and spaceships and shit and feel like this guy was Kanye on college dropout. Like I just can't fucking get ahead. Like I just every time I walk in the door it gets slammed in my face. Every time I try to get ahead and get my family out of here, get yeah. my mom out of here. I'm fucking wanted for working. something. The police are fucking the first yeah. episode, police are on my back. Like it just, it just, it just, it just speaks volumes to what they did with the show. And it's probably one of the best watches of the year for me. Yeah. It's really, really good. Like I said, I got one episode left. So TBD on how that goes. But uh, I think the hype is, uh, is real. Is real. Mm. It is. It really is. I say they need more shows like that. I think save the, Save the Jedi shit and the, <clears throat> and the you know, yeah, all the- it could be too much. I think that that type of Star Wars, like, I think that type of storytelling in the Star Wars space is needed. And I think that they want to continuously do that. Yeah. I wouldn't want to have like tons of that. So nah. I do think like the Mandalorian and Boba Fett are fun and easy, and those aren't big commitments, and those are enjoyable. Yeah. Um, but I feel like if there was a ton of Andors out there or, you know, if, if they were trying to recreate that all the time, it might Let's be just get more elements much. of actual life in the galaxy rather yeah. than leaning into the fantasy part of it. Let's yeah. see how people are living in the galaxy and, and surviving and, and going about their day to day. And you just add in the small parts. Let's make 
the thing that makes Star Wars secondary. Yeah. And let's invest in in, in something in the characters. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Damn, dude. That's right. I Damn, agree. That was a heavy watch list. It's two things. Um, did you I'm watch not, not um, too heavy. um The Peripheral? The Peripheral, no. Very good. You'd enjoy it. No. It takes it's a little you know it's a little hokey. Uh, isn't that the um the thing on, the, on Prime? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, God, it's written by what's his face that does Westworld. Yeah, yeah it's very Nolan's it's very brother. it's very Westworldish. Um I'd say what's it's more um, It's uh, Christopher Nolan's Take brother. A guess. Um David Nolan. Stephen Nolan. No. Jake Nolan. Closer. Jeffrey Nolan. Jonathan. John, I was on with my next Damn it, dude. <laughs> I was close. I kind of, I knew he, if, and it's, he uh, couldn't have a name like Christopher. And I think it's his, his brother wife, too. Something, wild, something yeah. Joy or? Take a guess at that. Go ahead. Just the first name, last name's Joy? Yes. Yeah. First name, Leslie. Uh, Very close. Lisa. Yes. Lisa Joy. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I know my wife. God. <laughs> 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 Holidays are setting yeah, up. Algorithm shaking now. Like, uh, That's right. Shit. Um, but, no, uh, I did not. It's it's very much, it's very Westworldy, but it, I'd say it's more Matrix meets Terminator, kind of. Yeah. Um, you know, these people are in a futuresque world. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main character basically is contacted by a company, a ghost company, yeah. to test out uh, because virtual reality is like the thing in this sure. current landscape. And this future company reaches out to them to say, hey, you want to try out this new tech? It's VR and it's not actually VR. They're actually piloting robot bodies mm. in the future and performing tasks uh, to help the resistance in the future interesting and it's uh it's pretty fucking rad because of the 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 real world stakes it takes on the bodies yeah of the people uh going into the the simulation they think it's a simulation they learn that it's not so they end up having to work together with the future mm. uh what do they call it and I'm not spoiling anything by saying this. This this has no uh, take in in the in the core of the plot. But they learn that it's they call it like a tunneling synapsis thing, where you're linking your consciousness up sure. with this bot as you do in the future. And uh, some people get heavily invested, and some people don't, man. But um, you know, there's villains, there's other people who are invested and shit like that. And but it's it has a real uh real villain villainy esque type of like the villains are very like cutthroat. It's very bloody and I didn't expect to see something like this on Prime. Okay. Like Jack Ryan is violent, but it's still kind of campy, where yeah. this is like extra violent. Extra like, violent. Yeah. All right. So I enjoyed it very, very much. Me and Chanel watched the whole thing. It's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. What else is on yours? Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's I mean, we can hit we can close out on uh the Guardians, the Galaxy. The holidays. <clears throat> holidays oh, the hol it's fucking holidays. Happy birthday, Jesus. Um we said that like ten times in this episode. It's his birthday. No idea. This is the first time I heard that. <laughs> uh I watched the Will Ferrow. Spirited. And Not seen that yet. That shit was terrible. Everybody, so everyone <laughs> says it's bad. Yeah, it's the nice. reviews suggest that it's okay. It's funny. It's got like a 70% or something on Rotten Tomatoes. They made a musical. 67. Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds yeah. made a, a ridiculous musical. And, yeah. you know, if you know who they are and you kind of are a fan of that type of comedy sure it's, you'll like it, it sits in that yeah, yeah it sits there but other than that it's, it, the story's trash but it's but funny you enjoyed yeah. guardians yeah uh i thought well, it was gonna be funnier if i'm gonna be honest. i thought it was gonna be funnier and i thought it was gonna be i thought it was gonna have heavier stakes like as a marvel oh you thought it was gonna have more meaning more meaning it had no meaning at all yeah uh you know there were some reveals in it and it's really great 
to see the characters. Mm -hmm. Marvel is very, very, um, they do a really great job at detailing the evolution of characters, even when you don't see them in a movie or their movie. Mm -hmm. When you come across them in, in some installment, there's small tweaks to them that show their, you know, their evolution. Yeah. Uh, like Groot, seeing that version, teenage mm. or young adult Groot, and kind of seeing how he's, his matriculation from baby Groot to, you yeah. know, who he is now. I got you. But, you know, I thought, the, I, I, I thought it was fun, but I just was like, yeah, that was it. Like, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, well, okay. I enjoyed it. I thought it was, it, yeah, it was serviceable. Yeah. I I agree with you. It didn't seem like it had major meaning in the grand yeah, scheme of no. things, but it was fun. It was good to see everybody. I like yeah. that. Learning. Um, uh, all right. And uh, did you see, did you watch any of Wednesday at all? A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, I was a big Adams Family fan as a kid. Like, you know, I just watched the cartoon yeah. and all that shit. This, uh, I saw passively like two episodes. Yeah. Cause like we had it on in the house, but I didn't get to like sit down and watch okay. it. And it looked like something I had to pay attention to. So I was like, I can't yeah. start this yet. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't jump in. Okay. Um but was it has her name Jennifer Ortega? Um yeah, I don't yeah, know. I think that's Jennifer, her name. Though. She looks the part. I think Ortega is Jenna. Right Jenna. Jenna Ortega. Jenna. Jenna. <laughs> Jenna. Jenna. She looks yeah. the part. You know what I mean? It looks it looks good. It looks good. I don't. I saw like some things in it that don't seem Adam Family esque, like it, like like a supernatural. Yeah. Which seemed different than. Yeah. That's why I was like, nah, this is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is not. I got you. The the old school Adam's Family. No, it's it's not. Okay. It's definitely not. All right. So but, I saw the dance scene, mm -hmm. which apparently was like. Basically unscripted or something like that. I don't know what the yeah, background so of it was. She created the dance sequence herself, and it is like comprised of a couple of different things. There is a, um, if you go way back in the Adams family, there is a dance scene featuring Wednesday. So she took elements, yeah, from elements the dance from that. scene. She took elements from, um, like. I guess there. I feel like there's something from the Adam Simply movies, the two, the more recent ones. She took an. She took something from one of those, and then like a bunch of other like. She looked at like goth parties or like raves and like all this mm. other stuff. But she basically like choreographed this whole thing on her own. I guess, or that's the story anyway. Um, but yeah, very uh, went very viral. Like very, very, very viral. Mm. It's like the second most watched thing in Netflix history or whatever. Okay, but. But it looked um, it looked good. Yeah, it's great. I, I gotta invest some time in it, maybe over a long weekend. Yeah, it's really, it's really, I'm really solid. Drunk watching my kids open gifts. But it definitely they are to your point with the powers, um, they're like very much building like a world uh, which mm. is very different because it's not Edmund's family has always been a little bit more confined very to contained them. to them. Yeah. Um it's like a dark Harry Potter. Is really what it's like. That's my opinion leaning into it. Wednesday. It's if like Wednesday was a magician, yeah, a was wizard, like a I mean, there's like a whole school thing and all these different kids and like it's like a whole world. Because Morticia built. is a witch, kind of right. Uh so in the original uh, comics, which is where Adam Sandler came yeah. from, they did not have powers. Okay. But they just but were different. Morticia, yeah. and in this, in this, uh, Morticia and Wednesday do mm. have powers, and there are other kids. So there's like, there, like right. there are werewolves, and there are vampires, yeah, yeah, and there yeah. are sirens, and there are other things, like other that. dark entities. Yes, type correct. Of yep. And they all go to like essentially they all go to this boarding school together for yes. kids that are like this. Right. Got it. So they're kind of building like this whole. Well, that was the thing. wasn't that the premise of like Adam's Family, two, where she goes to camp. And, so she does go to summer camp. Yes. And they're like she they're like nah you can't go here and they like find a camp for her or some shit. I don't remember. She goes she does she go to a years. summer camp in yeah. that. But Is that the not scene a where? They're doing the turkey. Yes. Yes. Okay. Got it. Yes. And then that is also tied into the show too, as well. Yeah. There's a whole like witches pilgrim like 
Thanksgiving component. Oh, wow. To it. I mean, again, it's it crosses a lot of old, like, Adam's Family themes off in the show. Like, you get a lot of that. A lot but of Easter eggs. It's homage, very much you know. a new take on the Adam's Family. And like I said, they're very much setting it up for more. Like, yeah, it's a world. I don't know if I want that. And uh, I love okay. it. I think it's really good. Yeah, you said that in the car. I love world building. Yeah, me too. Okay. And they've done an incredible job with like, I mean, the sets and everything looks like top notch. Like they did a really solid okay. job. It can be a little goofy at times because it can feel a little like high schoolish. Because I mean, it's for younger people. It's right. not really like designed for me. But I mean, it's violent and there's definitely murder. There's Kids dying left and right in oh, it. Shit. It's definitely aggressive, but it can feel a little goofy at times. Okay. There are some scenes where you're kind of like, oh, like, I mean, it's like kids getting like upset about the dance and like who's not taking them versus who it is. And it's so there's like conversations like that you got to let go of. But it, you know, it's great. Grow the fuck up. It's really, really good. Yeah. It's well done. All right. That's a wrap. We've been doing this for a while and well, it's the holidays. It's we got other things to do. So. Happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday, we'll Jesus. Jesus. If we didn't say it yet. Uh, yeah. Mary Sithmas. Cheers to Jesus. Feliz Navidarth. There you go. I'll drink hey. to that motherfucker. There you go. <laughs> Cheers. Merry Christmas, bitch.